There's nothing better than reaching a summit and coming down with friends around you. I love summits. They're very linear. They're tangible. They're reachable, step by step. I see summits as goals. We all have goals in our lives, multitudes and multitudes of goals. But I think more important than any one goal has been what I would call a vision. A vision of how we see ourselves living our lives and serving other people and impacting the world. What kind of legacy we want to leave behind us. For instance, if your vision is to serve, to serve your team, your community, how do you align those goals day after day to bring you closer to that vision? If your vision is to blast through people's perceptions of what's possible and shatter them into a million pieces, how do your goals do it? If your vision is not to respond and react to changes and challenges, but to lead, how do you take those goals and wrap them around that vision and make it real? I think a vision is like an internal compass. It guides us through good weather, more importantly, through bad weather. And it tells us where we're going and why it's so important we get there. I think every great ascent begins with a vision. About a week before my freshman year, I went blind from this very rare eye disease called retinoschisis. It was like a storm that had descended upon me with such force, such viciousness, I thought I was going to be crushed by it. I remember being led into school for the first time, being led into the cafeteria, sitting at a table by myself, listening to all the excitement and, and laughter and joy that was passing me by that I wanted to be a part of. And I wasn't most afraid of going blind and seeing darkness. What I was most afraid of was that I would be swept to the sidelines into a dark place. I'd be left there and I'd be forgotten. My greatest fear was that my life would be meaningless, a life lived for nothing. That was terrifying. I was tired of building walls around myself, protecting myself from loss. I wanted to tear down those walls. I, I wanted to attack. The best example I've ever seen of a person able to do this was a guy named Terry Fox. When I was going blind as a kid, I could see just a little bit out of one eye as I lost the last traces of vision. And one of the things I could still do if I got my face really right up against the screen was to watch TV. Mm -hmm. And I was watching this guy named Terry Fox. He was a Canadian. He had lost a leg to cancer and he was still in the hospital when he made a decision to run across Canada. This is a marathon a day. This is thousands of miles. This is not the natural decision a person in his situation was supposed to make. Most people would have just dug in their heels and focused on survival. But Terry seemed to understand that between the things that happen to you and the ways that you are supposed to react, there's a space. And in that space, there's a choice. It's never an easy choice, but it's still a choice. And he chose to attack. He was in the hospital watching kids around him dying of cancer. And instead of allowing that tragedy to crush him, he took that energy and he converted it into something else, call it purpose. And he used that energy to propel him every faltering step along the road. And the miles, they took a terrible toll on his body, on his stump. The look on his face was an absolute contradiction, full of exhaustion, yet at the same time, full of exaltation. And I thought to myself, there's something inside of us. At the time, I could only describe it as a light that seemed to be able to feed on frustration, on setbacks. In fact, to use those things as fuel. The greater the challenges, the brighter that light seemed to burn. And I hoped it existed in me. If I could feed that light and nurture it, and I could use it to turn into the storm of life and emerge on the other side, not just unscathed, not just damaged as little as possible, but actually stronger and better. Cancer came back and killed Terry before he was able to finish his run. But that run inspired hundreds of Terry Fox runs around the world, has raised almost a billion dollars of cancer research. I was tired of building walls around myself, 
protecting myself from loss. I wanted to tear down those walls. Like Terry Fox, I wanted to be an alchemist. I wanted to take my own lead and turn it into gold. So I made a decision that I would try everything, every opportunity that got put in front of me. With a little encouragement, I joined the wrestling team. I joined the Boy Scouts. I went on my first winter camp out and I slept in a tent for the very first time. It was soon after that that I got this newsletter. It was in Braille. It was a group taking blind kids rock climbing. And I ran my hand up the wall of my room and I thought, who would be crazy enough to take a blind kid rock climbing? So I signed up. And I found, through trial and error, that I could use my hands and my feet as my eyes and I could scan my hand across the face just before I was ready to lose strength in my forearms and fingers. I'd find enough to dig into a little crack or a pocket. And I left a lot of blood and skin on the rock that first time, but I got to the top. It was so exhilarating. It was so vibrant. I mean, it was, it was almost painful. It's like a rebirth. But I gotta say, as vibrant and as exciting as it was, it was also scary. And there's one thing that hasn't changed much since that very first time I went rock climbing more than 25 years ago, and that's the reach. In a way, we're all in the same boat. We're all reaching into darkness. For you, the reach might be earning your Eagle Scout, volunteering in your community, or taking on your own big adventure. I reached out that day, and it's led to some great adventures around the world. And I know it will for you too, so keep reaching. All right, guys. Strong work. Good job, Eric. You did it, man. Woo! We're on top of the world. We are on top of the world. The apex of the planet. Center of the cosmos. You I did it, man. Either. So many people doubted you. You showed them. So many people. You showed them. Thank you. Good job, buddy.